Smart meter is one of the buzzwords this year, important in every bingo. And Peter Haas is going to tell us how Germans implement it. So, one welcome. Yeah, hello, welcome to my talk, Smart Meter, a technology overview of the German rollout. Um, the talk is divided into four parts, and I will start with an introduction. Why uh, would somebody do smart metering? What is, uh, uh, are the uh, organizations that invol are involved in the German uh, rollout? I will uh, present the guidelines and protection profiles that uh, need to be implemented. Uh, by the vendor manufacturers. Um, I will give you an overview over the whole architecture of the components of the smart meter infrastructure. And uh, at the end of the talk, I will give a short overview of the cryptographical uh, specifications. This talk will not be about if smart metering is a good or a bad idea, or if we can play blinken lights with it. It's just about the uh, dry uh, specifications. So short about me, I've studied at the University bonn rhein sieg uh, near Bonn. Um, I'm one of the guys who's organizing the FrostCon, a free and open source software conference, you may know it. And I work for the Fraunhofer Institute Focus in Berlin. Uh, in the past, I have done research in uh, the area of wireless mobile backhaul networks and uh, wireless sensor networks and also a little bit on EPC networks. So let's start with the talk. Why would somebody want to do smart metering? If you, if you have a look at the internet, you find different uh, reasons. So uh, some countries uh, have huge problems with energy theft, with uh, manipulated meters. So they want to have digital signed meters that are more secure or not. Um, other countries, especially countries with a low population density, want to automate the meter reading so nobody needs to drive around the whole country and read all the meters. And uh, at least the official um, reason why we do this in Germany is uh, in Germany so-called Energiewende, which means the change from fossil energy resources to renewable energy sources. And therefore, we need a smart grid, which is a, um, a term for an intelligent network where um, you have more control over uh, ingress and outgress of, of energy into the network. Um, also, you have general reasons you want to give the consumer of commodities um, a direct feedback of his consumption so that you can just sit uh, there and look at your iPad and see, oh, if I switch that light on, I need 20 watts more. Um, you want a communication interface to buildings so that you can read status information from your building, you can uh, see if, if, if uh, something is broken in your heating system or something like this. And there is also a market for uh, third-party services that will be um, possible over this uh, communication interface. So yeah, the term smart grid also is always connected to smart metering. In a so-called smart grid, the role of the energy or con commodity consumer switched to a, a new speak word, prosumer, which is a consumer who all also can provide uh, energy or resources. So an example, if you have a solar panel on your roof, you can provide energy to the network and also you can consume energy from the network at night or if your panel doesn't provide enough energy or what you want. Um, we also will have distributed energy, energy storages. So one thing that always is mentioned is uh, e-mobility. So we, in the future, we hopefully have all electric cars that uh, have huge batteries. So you can store energy in your car, or you will have energy storage in your house so that if uh, uh, not enough energy is available from the grid, you can use that. But, uh, we will also have a change from demand-driven production, which means at the moment the huge uh, energy providers know our, from their stat statistics when, how much energy will be used, so they uh, produce more energy or less. So, and uh, in the future, if you will produce your energy with uh, solar and wind and stuff like this, you can't choose, I now want to produce more energy or less, so we need to control the consumption of the energy. So an example, if we have much uh, energy in the network, you can cool your fridge, you can cool your room with your, with your uh, 
air condition and if we have less uh, energy we shouldn't do that. Um, to enable that, we, uh, the, the term CLS uh, is there. CLS stands for Controllable Local Systems. That will be white goods like washing machine and stuff like this, or an example, the, the air condition. Um, we will have available availability-oriented contracts, which means energy will be cheap if it's available, and it will be expensive if it's not available. And um, there will be contracts that should prevent you from, from producing energy peaks. So. Uh, to, to, fetch, uh, to catch peaks in the network, you need uh, much uh, um, power plants that can fill in if you suddenly need more energy. So an example of a, a big industry um, puts on big machines, they generate a peak in the network and that's hard to cover with renewable energies. So yeah, we are in Germany, so we have a set of rules. The Energy Wirtschaftsgesetz, the Energy Industrial Act uh, was uh, put in place to deregulate the energy market, that uh, you have a discrimination-free grid access, so in theory everybody can be uh, its own energy company and put energy to the network and get money for it. We have the uh, renewable energy law, which uh, should uh, be an initiative to, to bring renewable energy f uh, more in the market, and uh, it also um, defines the rollout of the smart meter in terms of when what should when they need to be installed and which rules apply for the installation and we have the Netzausbaubeschleunigungsgesetz it's increasing grid development law in english and uh, it basically uh, should speed up um, the extension of the German power grid, so uh, on the one hand that we can connect it to offshore wind parks and something like this, and on the other hand that we can bring huge amounts of energy from one part of the, of the country to another part. An example, if you have much sun in Bavaria, you need to transfer the energy to the other t uh, part of Germany, to uh, the consumers there, so that is with the actually grid not possible. Also, there are many, many agencies involved. We have the, the BMW, BMWI. It's the Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology. They are uh, uh, in charge of everything concerning small and middle industries, uh, enterprises and industry. We have the uh, BMU, it's the Federal Ministry of Environment, Nature, Conservation and Nuclear Safety. They are especially in charge of reactor safety and nature protection. The BME, Federal Ministry of Interior, so that's uh, in, uh, in public safety, public services and all this. And uh, yeah, the agency you will have heard much about on conferences like this, the BSI. So they are in charge of uh, e-government, IT business, level security, certification, electronic ID and smart metering. Also there are some associations involved, they come from every sector, energy, telecommunication, IT, housing, industry, researchers, universities, and it's a really good mix up so you will see that uh, the specifications are, uh, from the security point of view, not that bad. So. When start all this, in, in 2006, there was an EU directive for energy efficiency that brings a little bit the, the, the whole process uh, ongoing. In 2008, the uh, Energy Wirtschaftsgesetz was renewed to also allow uh, uh, different parties to do the measurement that's important for this whole smart metering thing because uh, your operator will not always be your uh, uh, measurement provider. That's possible with, because of this law. Um, in 2010, the BMWI, BMWI charges the BSI with the development of the protection profile and the technical guidelines. That's the two documents this talk will be about. Uh, since January 2010, uh, all new buildings in Germany and all buildings that get complete renewed need to be equipped with digital meters that are not necessary smart meters in the sense of, of the protection profile and the technical guideline, but at least they have to be digital and have to be an interface which is uh, machine type readable. Um, in 2011, we have seen the first draft of all these documents and uh, since uh, one week we have uh, the final draft which uh, 
uh, will be evaluated until the end of January and then we will see the final documents and after that we will see meters and uh, gateways that implement this guidelines. That's the reason why we can't uh, see nice hacks of this up to now because there are still no devices. And yeah, uh, in, uh, up, on to, up to December 2013, there is, can still be old infrastructure can be uh, deployed in the buildings and after that every device that will be deployed needs to fulfill the requirements from the specifications. Um, this is uh, basically two document sets. One is the protection profile and one is the technical guideline. There are also some related technical guidelines which, in example, define the cryptography uh, uh, aspects and uh, which elliptic curves should be used for the encryption and all this. So let's start with the protection profile. It's a common criteria how, how uh, all this should be implemented. It's uh, based on the uh, ISO 1548. Uh, it defines the uh, security function and the requirements. Um, for an example, how the physical implementation of the meter should look like, uh, which, de which components should be in the same housing, which should be in different housings, uh, how the security module should work and interact with the meter, uh, how, how and which interfaces the device should have, how measurement data should be handled, uh, how this data should be protected inside the device and on all communication uh, interfaces, and which management function should be available to which parties. Also, it defines the assets and a complete threat model, so if you are in the uh, security business, you can use this threat model to look if your meter uh, fulfills it or not. Um, the technical guideline uh, extends the protection profile uh, uh, mainly with functional aspects and also uh, it uh, gives a huge number of rules for interoperability that all equipment from different vendors can play together nicely. And it also gives uh, additional security uh, rules. Um, this is an overview of the technical guideline. It's divided into five parts. The first part uh, defines how a smart meter gateway is, uh, should work. The second part uh, is about the security module, which is in charge of the whole uh, cryptographic uh, infrastructure. We have cryptographic guideline and the PKE guideline, which defines how these two aspects should be implemented. And uh, uh, the last one is about the communication adapter, also, uh, also about the interfaces. And for most of it, there are also test specifications that will be used for the evaluation process. So the most uh, important aspect to understand all this uh, are the roles in this new system. So formally you have basically the consumer and the producer and sometimes somebody between that sells you your energy. Now you have a huge set of uh, parties you have to deal with if you want uh, to have energy at home. Uh, the consumer, that uh, is yourself, it's the person who consumes energy, it's not the owner of the building. You have the grid operator, uh, that's the party that operates uh, the cable in, this, in the street. You have the supplier, which can or cannot be the producer of the energy. Supplier is usually the party you have your energy contract with. The producer is usually the, the, the entity that operates the power plants. You have a meter operator who comes to your building and installs the meter and repairs it if it's broken. You have a gateway operator who comes and installs the gateway and repairs it if it's broken. You have a meter administrator who administrates your meter, and you have a, meet, a, a gateway administrator who administrates your gateway. Uh, you have a gateway developer who is in charge of developing the gateway and needs to provide actual firmware updates on every update of the technical specification. And you have a profile provider that defines profiles. Profiles in this context are uh, definitions which data needs to be developed uh, delivered to which entity, if it should be uh, pseudonymized or not, uh, in which interval it should be delivered, and stuff like this. And you have external entities who, uh, uh, an example, want uh, to process your data or could be uh, somebody who will help you to optimize your energy consumption or um, provide uh, uh, additional services. So, oh, it's not that good. Um, this is an overview of the, of the whole uh, thing in your house. You have three networks. You have the WAN, the right area network, which is the connection to the, to the uh, gateway administrator who will sit uh, somewhere behind the, the internet. 
You have the HAN, the home area network, which can be your local LAN or can be a different network. That depends on how you want to, to do it. Uh, the HAN connects uh, to, uh, on the one hand, the HAN provides the interface to the user where the user can read the metering data, where the user can uh, define uh, uh, some, some uh, settings, and uh, it's also uh, the, the interface for a service technician who will come to your house and fix something. Um, also things like the energy storage and, and uh, the uh, e-energy car will be connected over the HAN. The LMN network is a lo local metrological network, and it, in it all the meters will live. Um, it's the only not IP network, everything else will be IP. So on the one side, you will basically see everything that can encapsulate IP. So there is no real uh, guideline what it will be. Uh, more interesting is the uh, uh, logical metrological network. There you have the Embus uh, interface. It's already used since, for, since years for metering, but uh, the new uh, for, for, for the Technical guideline, they have new cryptographic um, specification for it as the old one was broken. Um, it's, it's basically um, a broadcast uh, communication network which can be uh, uh, two wires or wireless. Yeah, and in the HAN you will also use uh, IP communication, so you will have Wi-Fi or power line or what is fitting to your building. The smart meter itself is a, yeah, it's a small PC that uh, at the end you have uh, some interfaces, you have an, uh, you, the meter needs to provide a wired and a wireless interface. Um, it needs to provide a display for the end user to see the, the readings. It needs to provide um, a front interface for the user and it, it can provide a legacy output that's a, um, a small infrared uh, output where you can put basically a serial interface. Yeah, and of course it has a, a power connector where it does the metering. Um, the meter has uh, relatively obvious tasks. It records the consumption, it submits the records to the gateway, and uh, it needs to sign and encrypt all data for the LMN, so even in the building everything needs to be encrypted. And it needs to be calibrated and sealed, which, which, could, uh, which will be interested because the firmware needs to be uh, 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 calibrated and uh, sealed too. Um, the smart meter gateway has the same interfaces to the LMN and uh, additionally the WAN interface. Um, and it has a crypto module which is not part of the meter itself, so it will be installed into the, in the device and uh, can be removed or exchanged. Um, the tasks of the meter um, are handling the metering data, protection of authentic authenticity, integrity, and confidential of your metering data. It is a firewall to all the three networks we have seen. It needs to provide a wake-up service for the administrator where he can trigger a connection with. Um, it's in charge of privacy preservation. i come later to that. Um, and it needs to handle the profiles I mentioned earlier. And um, a different, another important task, if you live in a building with, with many uh, flats, you will only have one gateway. So the gateway needs to make sure that the metering data of the different uh, people that live in that house are separated and, only, uh, and that only you can access your data. Also, uh, it needs to be firmware updatable and uh, yeah, it provides uh, some security uh, services to the uh, devices in the HAN that are uh, supported by the security module. Privacy tasks for the gateway are communication concealing. That means it should be uh, put random padding in the communication and stuff like this so that you can't guess what communication happens and, and how often it happens. And uh, it does pseudonymization. That means uh, it removes IDs of the meter from the data. Uh, in the first step and in the second step, the gateway administrator removes your gateway IDs so the data can, data can be used uh, pseudonym for statistical uh, evaluation and stuff like this. Um, 
it needs uh, it does data level encryption so we have all encryption uh, all, all, all communication happens in TLS channels but the data in the channel is also encrypted so in example you want to provide your measurement data to an external party and you don't want the gateway administrator to look at it in it so it will you have uh, two layer encryption for that and yeah again user authentication which basically uh, will happen with uh, german eid card or equivalent uh, authentication methods. Um, it, uh, the meter has uh, a number of locks. It has a system lock that uh, yeah, locks uh, system events, power losses and everything that is uh, available for the administrator. It has a consumer lock where every uh, access on your data will be locked. So if uh, somebody uh, access your data, your, your gateway administrator or somebody else, you have it in your log file. This log file is only available for the end users so you can always check who reads your data. And it has a calibration lock where every calibration relevant events will be stored. If you want do, to do metering, you need an exact time. And uh, obviously, uh, if you have time uh, diversing tariffs, it's it's it would be really nice if you could uh, adjust the time. So therefore, uh, time updates are only allowed over a, a secure TLS channel, and no DCF 7.7 or GPS or sufflexes is allowed. Also, there are some methods in the, in the specification to prevent uh, a fraud on this. In example, you can't do huge uh, time jumps without notification of the administrator. Um, the device itself has basic, uh, re relatively basic security features. You have memory encryption, you have a, a PACE authentication between the security module and the device itself, and you have a firewall. Um, something like intrusion detection or something like this is not mentioned in the specification as far as I know. Um, yeah, as, as mentioned earlier, the meter is uh, the gateway is in charge of the communication. Um, its, its basic functions is to build, a, um, open the TLS channel to the gateway administrator. Um, it uh, will send the metering data. It will send the, uh, to external parties or to the gateway administrator. It will open the CLS uh, interface to the LAN side and provides a TLS proxy for it, so it can devices from the LAN and HAN can connect to external parties. Uh, it needs to report every errors to the administrator and provides an administrator interface via a wake-up service. The whole communication, so the communication to the, to the gateway administrator, to external parties and everything like this, will happen through a RESTful interface. Uh, there are uh, so-called COSM interface classes that are defined, that defines the whole interface. Access happens via HTTP. We have uh, XML transfer syntax and yeah, addresses will look like at the bottom, so yeah, it's uh, basically REST. Um, yeah, the wake-up service is a nice feature. So the meter is not a, a gateway is not allowed to provide any services to to the van side, but uh, you need a way to communicate with the meter to bring him to to contact his administrator. So you can send him a packet, which needs to be signed and have a recent timestamp. And if that all is, very, is valid, valid, the uh, meter can uh, open a connection to a pre-configured uh, IP address. So that means you, you can't, um, or you should be, shouldn't be able to own them via the wake-up service, and there, there should, in theory, no other open services, so that's a good idea, I think. Yeah, the firewall of the meter should separate the three networks. Connections are only allowed from HAN to HAN and from HAN to WAN, not in the other direction. The LMN devices are not allowed to communicate with any other entity than the gateway. And uh, connections from the WAN side to the HAN and the LMN are forbidden too. So that's the firewall, basically. Um, the security module is a separate device which will be uh, in the housing of the of the gateway itself. It's a cryptographic service provider. It uh, stores all keys and certificates that are needed for the whole infrastructure. Um, it can be a smart card or soldered in module. In the recent version of the specification, they also speak of um, 
a wireless uh, communication, which will be NFC, but I'm not completely uh, sure if it will be uh, derived from the e-card system, but I'm not sure if it's the same. Uh, but they use also the same authentication mechanism, the PACE mechanism. Um, yeah, cryptographic support, it does the key generation inside the modules, keys will never leave the module, hopefully. Uh, cryptographic operation will all be done in the security module. Um, it also is required to do key destruction, so every old material that is not more used needs to be secured erased. Uh, what does that we is also specified, so it's not only, yeah. Uh, it is, uh, does the signature operation, does the user data encryption, and it also does the random, random number generation, so we hopefully will have good random number generators. Um, yeah, at least, at last, we have the TR131163, which is, uh, defines the cryptographical details. Um, it's part of the ECAR project of the German government. Um, uh, yeah, it defines, uh, and it defines also the, how the PKE will work, so we will basically have a national root CR, uh, some sub-CRs that provide keys for all the, all the energy providers and all the parties we have uh, heard before, and also it will get, generate end-user certificates. Um, all signatures will be based on ECDSA, also known as elliptic curve DSA, and all transport layer, as mentioned earlier, will be TLS. What TLS is luckily uh, defined to, it needs to be uh, version 1.2 or bigger, no fallback allowed, and yeah, so the basic known features that you want in such an infrastructure. Um, yeah, the random number generator are also uh, specified that need to be used. And the last interesting part that is defined is the initialization. So where comes the initial secret to the device? Where comes the initial, in, initial certificates to the device? Which is a, a really um, huge problem because most of the meters will come from China or from somewhere else where you really can't control the environment where they will be built. So um, the idea is that the meter comes without any um, cryptographic material and, and it will be um, generated on the first boot up and then deployed uh, into the, uh, the, the private keys will be deployed into the smart meter gateway from its administrator. The gateway itself will be shipped with an initial key. This key needs to be uh, deployed into the security module that can uh, happen during the manufacturing process, that can happen uh, by your vendor supplier or your, your um, operator, um, or it can happen during the installation process, which is not, the, I think, not the best place to do it. And uh, yeah, the last component is the security module that will come with an uh, vendor certificate and key material and will be exchanged from the gateway administrator on the first connection with the smart meter gateway or before installing in the facility of the gateway administrator, which should be um, a secured area. Yeah, also the hashing function are defined. That is uh, not that interesting, I think. Oh, you good in the time. Um, so, and at last it defines the communication in the LMN network. There is also TLS required, if possible, because there are also meters that can't communicate in a bidirectional way. So if you can't connect, communicate bidirectional, you can't do TLS. Therefore, a fallback is defined where you basically have a symmetric cipher where the private keys need to be deployed by, by your administrator on the first time you connect the meter. Um, yeah, uh, as mentioned earlier, all the data that goes through the network need to be encrypted and signed. And uh, rekeying for, the, for all the meters is required every two years. I have here some links. Uh, sadly, I couldn't find everything, uh, every document in English, but uh, English Wikipedia has interesting, much material about the German smart meter rollout, so I hope you will find the information you need. 
If not, you can contact me, and if you have any questions, I think we have no, some time left. Yeah, thank you, Peter. If there are questions, we have three microphones open on the three aisles, so please line up. No questions from the internet? Yeah, it's not not really. It's a technical question, but not that does not go into this whole cryptographic uh, direction. Um, it's more about the the accuracy of smart meters, actually. So, um, uh, as these uh, things are all consuming money, one is interested in the accuracy of smart meters and uh, how about the apparent power of uh, of devices and also the device itself. How does one deal with that? Um, I don't know sorry. if you if if you specialize in that. You you the question was about the accuracy. Um, the there is a, also a, a, an, an ISO specification that said um, it's. I can can you I I, uh, I don't know the exact number, but. Um, you, the interval is, is not specified. You can, also how often you get a reading. That's basically a setting uh, f which is set by the profile, and the accuracy of the meter itself. Um, it's, it has a class name. It's class E, but I I'm, I'm can't. You, I have to look it up. What's the, the exact details? I can look that up later if you want. What's yours in response or? Uh, no, in another question. Okay then, you. Hi, there is over here. Ah. Hi, there's a lot of networking stuff defined in these these specifications. Are they V4 or V6 or both? Either? Uh, that's a good question. That uh, everything, as far as I know, everything needs to be IPv6 ready. But um, it's I, I, I didn't find it in the documentation. So. Uh, it, it's not spe specified uh, in, in detail, as le at, at least not in the documents I read up to now. But uh, as I mentioned, the, the documentation was updated in December, exactly at December 21, so I didn't manage to read all the new documents. Hopefully it is in one of the new ones. It's in a few thousand pages. Okay. Okay, the middle aisle. Is there any uh, regulation about the, the temporal temporal resolution of metering? Because uh, I think this can you can find out a lot about uh, inhabitants of an apartment by just by yeah, watching yes. the power consumption, uh, what they are doing, and how many people are in there, and so on. Uh, so, is there any uh, regulation to limit the temporal resolution? Uh, the, uh, the specification says that the information that your external party gets is only the amount of energy you have consumed, not the time when. So basically the resolution depends on your contract. The, um, the providers are required to offer you a contract with a reading one time per year. So that basically means they get one time per year the information you have consumed, 6,000 kilowatts or something like this. But uh, if you want a uh, time flexible uh, tariffs, the reading needs to be more often. So it's basically by, uh, on the end user. If you choose, you want a standard tariff with which reading one time per year, they only get one time per year value. So yeah, that's, that's the option. Okay, on the right. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, the really informative talk. For a couple of questions um, about the scale of this project. So how many uh, smart meters are to be expected in households and how big is the, um, um, the whole market here? Um, is there any discussion about the acceptance? Because all these other big electronic governments project, and this is in a way part of of e-government in Germany have failed so far, so there's little acceptance in the EPA or uh, Gesundheitskarte or any of these things. Um, and um, that also brings me to the next question, who is really driving this? Is this the energy sector? Is it the government? Is it the IT sector? Um, so who are the stakeholders? And um, let, let me start with the first question, I already forgot your second one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, can you repeat the first one? The question was... <laughs> <laughs> how, 
how many smart meters? Ah, right. Um, as I said, since 2010, every every building which is renewed, uh, which will be renewed or new built, gets one. That's still true. So every new building gets one. Uh, after uh, that, just changed a few weeks ago. Um, I think after after December next year, they they changed uh, the date because the uh, specification wasn't ready. Um, every uh, industrial building gets a smart meter and every household with a consumption over 6,000 kilowatt per year. And uh, so over, uh, I think over the uh, future we will get all one, expect you live in a really odd building and use less energy. But uh, the plan is that everybody gets one so, so the, the smart grid idea could work. Yeah, it, I'm just wondering how many households are there in in Germany. I mean, oh, uh, you know, sorry. 40 million. Okay. Uh, I heard 40 million. Okay, so okay. And um, further on, um, could you say a little bit more about the planned um, integration with the Elektronische Personalausweis? Is that just a tool for doing the billing, or is there anything more complex involved in there? The idea is that you access your, your readings with it, so uh, you go to your meter and authenticate uh, against it, uh, to your gateway. So the second idea is that you can change uh, your energy contract with it, so you, you can authenticate against a, a web portal or something like this and say, okay, now I want this contract. So that's the basic usage of the uh, EID. And so. how about data locality? Where is uh, um, billing data, energy consumption data, and so forth stored? So multiple storage points, or is it in the machine, uh, or with the vendor, or? Um, the meter da the data itself are stored in the gateway. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, um, the period depends on the interval you you um, have in your contract. So if you get your readings every five minutes, the uh, time the uh, gateway will stored will be shorter because uh, the lock will uh, you have uh, yeah not uh, un the space will get full. Yes. Uh, the external parties are asked to delete the data as soon as they are not any more not more used for um, billing purposes. Mm -hmm. And there are also these data that get pseudonymized. Mm -hmm. There are I'm not sure what the other requirements, but I think that can be stored by the external party as long as they want. And could you say something about the stakeholders too? I mean, who who really is driving this in Germany? Yeah, um, so there is uh, no real official news statement about it, so it's, it's just my feeling. I think the uh, big interest was, was um, building operators and building owners, because uh, it, it's easy for them to, or better for them to have a, a direct view on the state of the building. Uh, one example that they come to us was uh, they want to get the actual status of the of the heating engine in the buildings, mm -hmm. because then they can see if it's broken and save much money. Uh, another uh, big stakeholders there are the, the equipment vendors, because they want to sell new meters and new gateways. Um, I think network operators, uh, uh, telecommunication network operators are also big stakeholders, because they want to sell the M2M platform for all this. Um, yeah, and, and so the government itself is, is driving it because of its uh, initiative to, to switch over to renewable energies. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, energy provider itself are not that interested in it, but that's just a feeling. I, I have no proofs for that. Okay, and, and my final question is, the, uh, is there any discussion on um, having some uh, fine-grained emission certificate trading based on smart meters? I mean, you could break down emission certificate trading from the industrial level to a household level with this, basically create new secondary markets. Is there any, to your knowledge, talk about that? Uh, it's an interesting idea, but I haven't read anything about it, so possibly that there is one, but uh, the idea is to, to lower the emissions with, with this initiative, so Hopefully, we don't need to trade uh, anything if that all has happened. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, for clarification, here. <laughs> ah. um, uh, if employed in a smart grid, does this smart meter somehow regulate the power consumption of all the devices in the house? That's somehow that came, came over uh, like that. Uh. 
It can, uh, there are this CLS um, interface which I mentioned. This is the, uh, the interface for your household, uh, um, devices in your household. So you can, the idea is that you can allow an external party to say your, uh, your devices, now it's a good time to operate. So an example, one example was uh, the, the air condition. So the idea is uh, that could be work on two ways. One way is you have your uh, contract profile in your gateway and your gateway just informs your device now it's energy cheap or now it's energy really green. And the other option is that you have an external party that connects over the CLS interface to your internal devices and, and do this uh, activation for you. Okay, thanks. The middle aisle. Uh, does this architecture allow to, to, uh, to turn off the power of a household? Uh, yes and no. The, the specification says that uh, the meter and the gateway is not allowed to have any uh, influence on your uh, energy uh, delivery, but it also says that uh, you could have a device behind that in the in the HAN that switches this off. So you could think of something like um, prepaid energy, but it's not the infrastructure itself. That would be a different device that is controlled over the uh, interface. So you can say yes, but you need yeah. It only happens if you choose a contract that uh, works that way. So that, that the devices that get everybody will not be uh, able to switch off the energy delivery. I have two short questions. One is, um, there are some indications in California that the radiation that comes from these devices uh, might be a little bit higher than what would be healthy for humans. Uh, what are the studies on that and what is known about that in Germany? And my second question is, uh, how much of these installments is voluntarily, and are there consequences or fines if you don't comply to install them? Radiation? <laughs> Did you say radiation? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of, of uh, any uh, studies about that, um, but I opened some of that devices and then it's just basic Linux computers with some metering equipment. I, couldn't imagine that it has, it has more radiation, but if you could point me to that studies, I would like to have a look at it. And uh, the second uh, question was, if it's required, yes, it's required for the industry, it's required for households over uh, 6,000 kilowatt per year, but um, this both will happen in the future, so I'm, there is no, uh, no, no um, actually, up to now, nobody could uh, say he doesn't want it because he doesn't need to have it, so I don't know what will happen if, if you say, no, I don't want a smart meter. Okay, over the right aisle. All right. Um, as an end user, I will not be able to uh, look into the software, the firmware for the smart meters and so on, so how credible can the uh, auditing options for the user really be? Yeah, that's a good question. The only thing you can audit is that, uh, yeah, you, you, what, what is in the protection profile, you can look if there are open ports and something like this. You will not have, the, at least if the vendor doesn't publish the firmware, uh, will, will not have the option to look at it like on every other consumer device, at the, sadly, at the moment. There are uh, some projects that try to build an, an open source smart meter gateway and an open source smart meter. The interesting question will be if that get a certification or not. So that, but I, there is no point in the specification that says that the firmware can't be open source. So if the implementation works like the specification and you find somebody who pays the uh, uh, certification process, it's possible that the uh, open source smart meter could happen. Left aisle. Hi, Peter. Uh, one simple question, have you had the chance to evaluate actual devices in regard to software security or where do you think security flaws may occur? Um, I have, uh, have a look at some devices and one of the devices has some open ports that it shouldn't have and an open FTP server, but all devices that... <laughs> 
all devices that are at the market at the moment don't implement the protection profile and the uh, technical guideline because they are both not finished yet. So we will have to wait at least until end of January to get devices that implement this uh, security guideline and then we will start with the fun again and we will see what happens. So uh, as mentioned earlier, Loads the protection, uh, the protection profile says no services are allowed on the one side, no uh, administration interfaces are allowed on the, on the HAN side, except they are specify, uh, especially enabled from the administrator and stuff like this. So in theory, that could be a good infrastructure. We will see what the implementer will do with it. Uh, Thank you. I'm definitely looking forward to your next talk. Thank you. Yeah, when you're talking about the, um, the tariff option where only once in a year it would be measured, um, wouldn't this just cancel out one of the most biggest advantages of these smart meters, yes. uh, which is the quicker reaction on the consumption? Yes, it's, it's an option that is, uh, is, is the option is um, there to protect the privacy of the people. So if you are afraid of a daily reading or a weekly reading or a reading per minute, then you have this option, but uh, it, it's not the idea of the whole smart metering. But it, it, it has still the advantage that you as a user have a, a look on your current consumption. So you can still have a look at the readings and can see, oh, uh, I think I need a new fridge. The old one takes too much money or uh, energy or stuff like this. Okay, outer aisle. Yeah. Um, from what I understand is that these regulations affect the um, smart meter and gateway on the consumer side. Are you aware of any regulations which are also... Um, yeah, regulate the receiving side, so the pr providers or the energy suppliers. On the provider side, the, the uh, usual protection profile for uh, uh, entities who are in, in involved with user data applies. So everything that applies to your email provider or stuff like this provides, uh, applies also to the entities. There is a huge specification how you have to secure uh, uh, the data storage and all this. Um, the question is how to evaluate that. So how do you make sure that external parties don't lose your data or something like this? That, that's a different topic. But uh, in theory, there are already regulations that apply to everybody who is in contact with personal data. But there are no special regulations like how these suppliers exchange their data between themselves and so on, or what they are allowed and what they are not allowed? Um, I'm not 100% sure if there is not an additional document that says something about it, but uh, okay. I need to look it up. Okay. Please speak into the mic. We won't hear it otherwise. I would like to answer that quickly. Um, the gateway administrator has to be ISO 27001 Grundschutz certified. That's yeah. all. Yeah, there is a nice German word for everything. <laughs> <laughs> but is there a law or, or a regulation for that that he has to do it? Or I mean, is it somewhere written? Yes, uh, it's in the in the TRs. Uh, One of the TRs. So he's not allowed to be a gateway administrator if he is not certified nice. for this. But the, that uh, TR is quite short, so it's three, three pages. Thank you. Okay, then next question's here. Yeah. Front Ooh. row again, ah, so, again. sorry. Um, so the, before the rollout, how is the, I mean, there are some households that already get some. We saw that in the press, the first meters were installed. How is the whole project tested for scaling at such, uh, as there's going to be such a large number employed? Um, sorry? The, the, the scaling test. How is the whole, whole project tested for scaling? I mean, uh, you can, yeah. Yeah, you, you are you are a contractor, or you are. Uh, d d depends a little bit on uh, your personal situation, depending on who will install the, the meter in your household. So, the energy provider or your your uh, energy contractor needs to uh, um, do the installation, and he also needs to pay for it. 
so they can do the way they uh, choose the way they want to do it. So uh, basically, they need to send you a technical a technical guy who who installs it. But uh, yeah, they have a little bit of time. So only for new households and uh, renewable, it's at the moment. So they don't have to roll out it in the whole Germany yet in a, in a month or something like this. So it will take 10, 20 years because everything, every household has one. So Middle I aisle. Yeah, so uh, you said that the end user devices will be uh, certified using common criteria. Usually there's an um, evaluation assurance level, so AEL level, that goes from one to five, where one is this very simple, and five is complete formal verification. I guess if they manage to actually have an open FTP port that was not completely formally verified there. But, uh, so what is the actual level there? Because that will mean quite a bit of burden for a semi-formal verification level four, for example, if this needs to be done in open source and has to be verified. There's a lot of money and time involved. So. What is the level required? Um, the, the specification is based on, on the common criteria. It's, it's not uh, one of the levels. So they just took uh, the, the uh, good parts from it. Uh, so every meter uh, needs to fulfill the same it requirements. So it has bad parts. Yeah. It, it Sorry? Roughly, yeah, it's four plus. Yeah, uh, four, four plus. plus uh, four plus, yeah. That's typical. OK. okay. Uh, um, I so was it's semi-formal plus some other show. Yeah, OK. That, that was my question. Okay, okay. left aisle. Um, okay, so you mentioned that uh, there might be third-party companies uh, to use the data. Have you got any examples what um, they might be interested in, or um, if there are any companies who are already um, looking for this data? Um, an example that I've heard was that yeah, so an external party could uh, analyze your, your data for you and give you suggestions how to optimize your energy consumption. Um, that was uh, um, another uh, external party you could be interested. Is, is not in your in your data itself, but into the in the. Um, interface to your house, so one, one option was uh, emergency systems for all people that uh, at the moment are connected via the telephone line that could be now uh, connected to the emergency uh, central via the smart meter gateway. And uh, also you could think of something like insurances, insurance companies that want to see if there's really a, a, a lightning that destroys your TV set or something like this. So there are many options. So basically, we, have, we will have an IP connection to every building with some security around it. And every service you could think of over, you know, over via the internet could happen over uh, the smart meter gateway, basically. So there are many options. OK, middle aisle, you. Would it be possible to record at which price energy was consumed and then sum that up and read it at the end of the year? So uh, eliminating the privacy issues and still have the higher resolution and uh, final... Uh, uh, um. if, you, if the smart meter knows the price of the energy at the moment and then it sums it up over the time and I understand uh, the question. Um, I think technically it's possible. I'm not sure if, if uh, the guideline allows that or if your contract provider will be willing to do that. But all data is signed. All data is, is, uh, should be uh, protected against manipulation. So I think there is, I, I, don't, I have no reason why not. Thank you. OK, front row again. So. Um, I think my, my scaling question was somehow ill-phrased or so, I don't know. Uh, it was basically about the dimensions of the project, since uh, this is going to be employed all over Germany. How do you make sure that like 50 million smart meters uh, yeah, communicate correctly with each other? Um, how to make sure how, that they communicate correctly? Yeah, um, you can't make sure that in advance. You, you have the, the specification that hopefully covers all aspects. They're working on it for now three years, so I hope they have everything in, kept in mind. But there will be, you have the, uh, as mentioned earlier, you have a testing specification for every aspect where completely stand which, which interaction should work, which interaction shouldn't work. 
and under which condition it should work. So uh, hopefully you can just go through all the speci uh, test specifications and at the end you have a product that work together. But um, at least it, it's not really your problem, it's a problem of your operator. So the, there will be huge interest in a working communication between different vendors because you can change your, your energy provider and uh, your energy provider will or will not bring you a new smart meter, but the gateway will stay the same. So the industry has a really huge uh, interest in, uh, interactive, in, in infrastructure that works together, so I hope that will enable products that work together. Okay, middle aisle. Okay. The specification is only on the smart meter itself and not on the backend systems. So, for example, could I simulate thousand smart meters and report that everyone is using the maximum of the, uh, of the current? So they are providing too much uh, power to the grid. If you have uh, valid certificates and val valid uh, keys that are accepted by the gateway administrator, then yes, but uh, the every meter and every, uh, every gateway that is in the network of one operator has uh, pr uh, its own private certificates that are well known by the operator. So if he don't screw up his infrastructure completely, he should see that your 500 simulated meters are not the real ones. Uh, but is there a specification how the interface on the provider side? Yeah, that, that's, this, that's this restful interface I mentioned earlier. Okay. Middle aisle. Yes, you. Uh, one question only. Um, how much does one smart meter consume in power? Uh, that's a good question. Yes. Uh, it's not specified. Uh, <laughs> and who does pay for it? Um, I, I, I wanted to do some, some measurements before, but uh, the measurement device didn't arrive uh, in time. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, about one to three watt, but um, okay. I couldn't measure it myself up to if now. If it's one watt um, and we have 40 million people using it. Yes, so we have complete 40 infrastructure. megawatts only for the infrastructure. The complete infrastructure, <laughs> not not the meter it's, uh, uh, on its own, the, the gateway and all the things you have in your in your building that are basically Linux routers, so they consume nearly the same. It's a small arm in all devices I have seen now. Yeah, the infrastructure will consume a huge amount of energy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, what happens when the smart meter somehow crashes or something doesn't, doesn't work and uh, yeah, what happens to the accounting? Is it the provider's problem or is it your problem if uh, yeah, something goes wrong? Uh, good question. Uh, uh, at, first it's, it's at first the provider's problem as long as uh, he can't... Uh, uh, yeah, it's the same like no, your meter breaks bro down now. So if if uh, your your operator comes to your house and uh, a big hole is in the meter, then it's your problem. But uh, if it's a, a software fault or something like this, then it's a problem of the provider. But that's that's question we will see in the future how that will be handled in in reality. Okay, outer aisle. About the energy consumption of the infrastructure, um, it may consume a lot of megawatts, but it's probably l much less energy than a bunch of guys driving around Germany with a clipboard reading all the meters manually. Yeah. <laughs> Into the microphone, otherwise you won't get a joke. Uh, he, he says that the uh, guys don't always drive around uh, to get the readings, that's true, but uh, you are, there are still guys driving around because they make uh, regular checks if you provide the real data and especially if you uh, uh, change your flat or something like this and somebody needs to look up if, if the uh, meeting readings from the last uh, uh, guy who lives in the flat are correct and something like this. So, but I, I think that's not a point to, to evaluation. Then we can also say let's switch down all the DSL these flames because they take much energy. That's not really the option at, at this point, I think. So, okay, time is up. Thank you for your attention and thank you, Peter. Thank you.